Let's look into another word problem. Keep in mind, we might be asked to plug into the original function if we don't see any words asking for change. If it says average change in this problem, I'm gonna use the slope formula, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Or if we're plugging into instantaneous rate of change, I'm gonna take the derivative and plug in the value for t that I'm asked for. So for this, we have a vasodilator is prescribed to patients with blood vessels that have become too constricted. The cross-sectional area A, so there's one of our units here, of blood vessels T hours after vasodilator is administered is given by this A of T equals 0 0.02 T squared, and this is in square centimeters um, for one to five hours. So we're given that interval from one to five. That just means that if you take the medicine, it's not gonna work forever. So this is very common, common with medicine, right? If you woke up yesterday with a headache and you took a Tylenol, you could still get a headache today because that Tylenol has worn off. So just like with this vasodilator, they can take it. It's gonna keep working between one and five hours. And then after that, you probably have to reevaluate and make sure you don't either have to take it again or see if you're good to go. But that's what that one, um, to five interval here is, is talking about. It's not working forever. So let's just pause before we even what, read what the question is. We want to figure out what are we plugging in and what are we getting out. So we have two things. We have T hours and area in square centimeters. So you plug in how many hours it's been since you've given somebody medicine and you get out the area in centimeters squared to make sure that their blood vessels are still open and pumping blood so that they're doing okay. So it says find the average rate of change of the cross-sectional area between one and three hours. So we wanna look one and three hours after they've been given this vasodilator and compare that to the instantaneous rate of change after two hours. So now the question here is, am I plugging into the original, the slope, or the derivative? Well, let's read this problem a little closer. Find the average rate of change of the cross-sectional area. Average rate of change means slope. So we're asked average change on the interval from one to three hours. So we're gonna use the slope formula there. We're going to do f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So for this one, we're going to do a of 3 minus a of 1 all over 3 minus 1. And we're plugging in to this formula here for a of t, which is 0 0.02 t squared. So I can grab my calculator and do this on the side. You don't really have to write this out. I'm just showing you what I'm plugging in. I'm plugging into this original function, 0 0.02 t squared. So I'm going to do 0 0.02. My t value is 3 getting squared for the first piece, which is 0.18. So I have 0.18 here for a of 3 minus a of 1. I'm going to grab my calculator, plug in a of 1. If I need it, it's 0 0.02 times one squared though, which one squared is one times 0 0.02 is gonna say 0 0.02. All over three minus one is a two hour interval. So the difference in area, 0 0.18 minus 0 0.02 is gonna be 0 0.16 square centimeters over that two hour interval, which means we get 0 0.08. And remember a rate of change needs two units. The units with the top, the points, 1, 8, and the point zero two are in centimeters squared, and the bottom, that 3 and 1, are in hours. Output over input. So the average rate of change, the average rate of change between hours 1 and 3, since taking the medicine or taking the vasodilator is, what would we say about what's happening? We would say that the average rate of change is 
increasing the blood vessels by 0 0.08 centimeters squared per hour. So during that time frame, from one to three hours after the medicine is taken, it is still working. It's still increasing the area of that blood vessel by about 0 0.08 centimeters squared per hour each hour on that interval. So it's still working. Definitely don't redose in that first one to three hours because the medicine's still kicking in unless you need it to be going up by more than that. All right, so that was the first part. We just found the average rate of change by using the slope formula and then remembering we use two units to help us to our interpretation. The next part says compare that to the instantaneous rate of change after two hours. So whenever we see instantaneous rate of change, we are thinking derivative which is actually faster. So I'm happy to do instant change. So our derivative is instant change or slope of a tangent line would be another way to call the derivative. So we're gonna take a prime of t and we can plug in any hour t to see how the vasodilator is working. So looking at this function, our a of t is 0 0.02 t squared. So I'm gonna bring down that power. It's gonna be 0 0.02 times two, which is 0 0.04. And then we have t to the first power. So it says compared to the instantaneous rate of change at two hours. So a prime of two, it should be somewhere near that 0 0.08 because that's on the interval for that average rate of change. And that's a pretty small interval, so it should be pretty accurate. And if we do 0 0.04 times two, replacing our t in there, we really do get 0 0.08 centimeters squared per hour. So at hour two, the area is what? We got a positive slope at that instant, so it is increasing. The area is increasing by 0 0.08 centimeters squared per hour which is not a really big surprise because we did that work in the first part. So it makes sense that the answers agree if between one and three hours on average, it was increasing by 0 0.08 centimeters squared per hour. I'd be very surprised and concerned if we got like a negative answer for our derivative at two hours. It should probably be right around that average rate of change for that instantaneous change at two hours. But some good practice, finding average means slope. Instant means derivative and plugging in and using two units to interpret the answer.